Isapa, with feelings, silent is golden, in the latest of his current run as a romantic leading man, Estes Bagic, Yulin, meet me in St. Solon. Carlo Aquino accomplishes something not a lot of actors his age can do, convey a myriad of emotions without saying a single word. And when his character, sign language instructor Dolly Pastrano, finally lets us hear his voice, the only word that comes out of his mouth like a sweet is his special Sunnian's name. Silence is golden, indeed. It's the proverbial thing that is best conveyed in Isapat's good feeling. Prime food is precious little screen romance. By a swirl of words and emotions more than indicating actions that mainstream actors often use as an acting crush. For the award-worthy Carlo, what he is able to do is no easy feat because the role requires him to convincingly portray a broken-hearted deaf man as he scales heightened and sometimes confusing emotions without degenerating into caricature. He even manages to bring out the appealing romanticism of the unique language with visual manual modality to convey deeper meaning. It's also a performance that astutely bridges the gap between the deaf and the hearing world, devoid of many village thoughts or really accurate watch and learn excesses. But the film is as much a revelatory, platform cleverly utilized to unravel main mango the theater for underserved festive shops. Taking a cue for her more seasoned leading man, Maine delivers a knockout portrayal that is easily her best performance to date. It doesn't hurt that she gets to essay a flaw but readily relatable character that allows her to lend delicate emotions and sink her dramatic teeth into them. While Carlo and Maine don't really figure, in vain popping new relations of three, there's are performances that are defended by music enhanced scenic framing, courtesy of Giancarlo's Buwin, and breezy pacing. They're best appreciated by more discerning viewers and acting adjudicators. As architectural graduate Mara Navarro, all this could be her half is tasked to breathe life into a character that plays well to her strength, idiosyncratic charm and little cast potential as a performer. Mara and Dolly are kindred spirits brought together by spirits washing losses. She's a come law graduate whose world comes undone after she flunks the board exam. While he's just had his heart twist and diced by his hearing fiancé Anicus, Arfi Munu, suitably cast in a proficiently realized cameo, related realization that she can really spend the rest of her life with a charming but deaf man. As she takes a much needed break to lick her wounds, Morris starts to see beyond her next door neighbor's carefully concealed pain and disability. But is Dolly merely a temporary distraction for Mara, to mask the pain and embarrassment of her unexpected and debilitating failure? While it has progression's falling moments, he's the cat, with feelings that the bank on wacky, has ruled, sequences to win over viewers although there are a few judiciously staged scenes of this to establish the star-crossed couple's fortuitous meeting. In fact, the production just relies on the straightforward, no thrills simplicity of its tale to work in its favor. It maneuvers its way around Mara and Dolly's individual struggles and the unforced romance that comes out of them. After all, when you have a good enough story to tell, you don't need distracting tricks and gimmicks to help see the movie through its dizzyingly dazzling denouement. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe.